Hello everybody. Welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Today's project is all about taking your trash to treasures, whether it be leftover resin drips or old makeup jars. Can you find beauty in it and are you going to challenge yourself to create something with it? I worked on a piece the night before and I came in the morning to just tidy up my studio and I saw some beautiful patterns in this resin and I thought, oh, it reminds me of some delicate petals. Could I create a flower from this? You see me start to play around. I'm seeing how bendy it is. I'm seeing if it's going to adhere to the other resin. And I'm also seeing if it's going to stick to my little wooden stick there as a, a base for me. It didn't. So I thought I'm not giving up on this because I love what it's going to look like if I can make this work. So I got out my scissors and I started cutting my petal shapes. Now the resin is very hard to describe, but it was tacky enough that if it stuck to the other resin, it would stick together and I need to pull it apart. But it wasn't tacky enough that it was leaving fingerprints or anything like that. I think it was the temperature, the time of night I worked on it the night before and the brand. Anyway, I'm so glad I stuck with it and I'm so glad that I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick my camera on because if this turns into something, hopefully that will inspire you and hopefully uh, you will you know, see what you can make from your resin drips if you don't already. You can see the end of a circle. It was a perfect, 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 perfect circle from where it had dripped over on a ocean piece that I was working on. Now, I think I got a little bit, you can see I drop it all over here, but I got a little bit tired with my fingers because it wasn't sticky enough to stick to a stick. I'm trying to find out how can I put it down so I'm sort of laying it on the table Eventually, I realized put it in a plastic cup, Sharon. It's not going to stick to it, but it will help you see the shapes that you're going to make. As with any uh, rose or uh, flower, I mean, this is not a rose. It's from my imagination. I start smaller and I work bigger. And then you will see me um, just check that the composition looks well and that where I'm putting my petals, that they're going to overlap in. Now, the beauty with this resin, because it was very bendy, when I cut it, it didn't leave any sharp edges. I chose not to sand down the edges and I came in and I put some silver leaf pen around it and I'm very happy with the end results. It's just going to go on my little dressing table and bring a little joy to my face when I see it. Um, but that's a personal choice. Each one of the steps I'm making are all personal choices. Um, you can uh, choose to do all of the steps or neither of the steps. Anyway, I do use the rest of the leftovers for a, another little thing that I'm experimenting with. So come back and see another video. See what I created with it. Anyway, if you are finding this video is adding value, remember thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments, always welcome. That's what really helps me get my art out there. Now I'm just doing voiceovers. I have just had surgery a couple of days ago. I haven't got any energy to go into the studio, but I can actually uh, do some voiceovers. So I thought maybe when I've got the energy in between uh, lazing and re-energizing, I'll do some voiceovers. So sorry if my voice is a little bit husky. Anyway, back to the project. You can see that cute little flower is starting to take shape. You can still see I'm thumbs and fingers. The downside with doing it when it was so near curing is the bottom part. Because it couldn't adhere to the stick in my head, I'm thinking, okay, you're making this beautiful flower, but what are you going to do with it? <laughs> what is it going to lead to? Um, how can you make it become a piece? And it's also inspired me to go back and create some more resin flowers. So watch that video up and coming. And um, yeah, that's when I thought, well, I've used this from some leftover drips. So what have I got around the house that I've used and um, is sitting empty. And I have this little glass jar from uh, my moisturizer. And I thought I could just use that because that's gonna fit inside there beautifully. Anyway, back to the flower, you can see I'm trying to pull it away. It doesn't leave indentations of where my finger's been, but I am allowed, uh, allowed, able to bend it. And that's when I come in with some masking tape to try and hold it while it does its final cure. So I'm just currently looking at my composition. 
checking that I've got enough, I think, character within my flower and keep working it until I'm happy. You do see me come in and put a flower across the bottom and that's just to try and help create a little bit of a bottom base so you can't see through the rose too much. If I'd have done it when it was more um, wet and less cured, I probably could have squeezed the bottom of the petal um, so that you couldn't see down through where the stem would be. Anyway, I'd love to know what you've been working on. Um, let me know in the comments, what's the uh, project that you're working on currently? And what is a colour that is currently inspiring you? You may be able to hear my <laughs> fur babies, the two dogs, bouncing balls around me, so I do apologise for that. But let's get back on with the project. So I'm at the final stages now, just going to add it in, make sure everything I'm happy with. And then now you're seeing me the next day where it's fully cured. I left it another, I think, 12 hours. <clears throat> uh, you could leave it 24 hours. And I'm just slowly removing my masking tape to make sure that everything has adhered. It's solid and I'm not going to pull the petals apart. They were adhered enough so that they don't fall apart. I mean, just look at that. It's yummy goodness. Anyway, this is my leftover moisturizer tub. And I could have recycled it, but I've got another one. So I thought, you know what? My little rose is going to go in there. I show you that I'm using Casting Craft White here, but I'm also using a deep pink as well. And I just kiss pour them in. I don't know why I went for these colours. I'm just really feeling the pinks and the greens at the moment. But I didn't want it to be too harsh to um, take away from the softness of the flower. So the white and the pink continue to blend throughout the night i think that's the joy of some of the casting craft why it's going to keep bleeding into the other colors so it became more of a soft pink i swirl it just once um trying not to mix it too well but i just wanted there to be a little bit of interest so it wasn't a solid pink a solid white but when i put that flower in there if you were to look at the jar there'd be a little bit of a contrast there i made sure that there was no resin on my gloves in the area i picked up my flowers and you can see now i'm just balancing out the rose with some masking tape it's all cured it's all set you can still see some nice little features in that jar coming out but i wanted to start to bring it together so i use my silver pen to go around the edge of the jar and the edge of the petals and again this is an optional you don't have to do this but for me it added some beauty and it tied it all together I then came around and I added some glue and I added some gems just to try and blend that flower into the jar. Again, optional extra. You could have just left it as it is, tied a little bit of ribbon around there and it might have been nice and delicate. I decided while I'm on this journey, I'm just going to add some bling. I started out with some uh, green uh, to complement the flowers, but then I also added some clear because I felt it was a little bit too harsh. But all the way along, I am recycling, gathering up my little gems so I can use them on other projects. And this is where you see me just with the silver pen. I've highlighted just the edges and I felt like it finished the project off beautifully. But let me know your thoughts. Would you have stopped any stage? Are you going to have a go at creating something like this yourself? If so, let me know. I would love to see your work. Remember, there is a Sharon and Liv Vivid Days art page on Facebook. So click in the link below and come back and see some future projects. But thank you so much for choosing to spend some of your time with me. I really, really appreciate it and value every minute that you spend with me. And wherever you are, I hope you're safe and well. And I hope that you're creating. See you on the next video. Bye bye.